Hey folks, it's Justin here at Metcalf Mills. You see right out through here is my cucumber row. I plant a lot of cucumbers. This is the most I've ever planted, but seems like every year we run out of pickles too early. So I wanted to have plenty. So I planted about a hundred foot row of cucumbers and we got the home garden cucumbers for eating. And these are pretty much just for pickling. And I'm gonna show you how I do that and you might just make sure if you like pickles that you plant enough next year because if you don't it's a sad day when you grab that last jar of pickles out of the pantry or the root cellar or whatever the variety of cucumbers i grow is called a national pickling cucumber they've always worked real well for me and it's a good a good type of cucumber to grow in my opinion and no matter how many times you've done this or how good you are, I picked the small ones. We love the babies pickled. No matter how many times you've done this, you are going to miss some cucumbers. They hide under leaves and they're good at hiding. So no matter how good you are, you're gonna miss some. And like I say, I get them I mean, just as soon as they're big enough to eat, I get them. Seems like you'll always miss some, like I was saying, and they get too big. I'm gonna try to make some big salt pickles out of these, just see how they are. I've never really done that before, but I'm gonna try it and see how they turn out. Oh yeah, those tomato plants that we grew from suckers, here they are, they're blooming. Look at this, blooms that fast nice looking tomato plants need to watch that video if you've not watched it tomato plants from suckers check it out now let's get up here and see what we can do about pickling these cukes that we just picked something i've noticed on my cucumbers lately is this film see that dingy looking film so i just use a vegetable brush and water and scrub each and every one of them till that comes off. And the water looks really nasty after you do that. So I sure don't want that in with my pickles. I don't know if it comes from the rain. I don't know, but anyways, I get it off of there. Do not want it in with my pickles. The bigger ones I'm taking out because you don't want anything over about like four inches long like that's the biggest one i'd put in a jar to pickle right there i've got a, a thing that i usually wash my vegetables on outside with a water hose but it didn't work out with the weather this time so i'm just going to dump them all in here and separate them accordingly so much easier to dump them out on my big stainless strainer and just spray them off with the water hose outside and then you you're ahead of the game when you bring them into the sink but timing didn't work out to do that this time so i was in a hurry to pick a bunch before it rained and well i'll just go ahead and pick them and then it started raining and i didn't rinse them off outside so on this big one you can maybe see it right between the right in kind of in the ribs it gets just kind of a gray film scummy type stuff so i scrub each and every one clean before i put it in a jar because this is my food or our food and i want it to be as clean as possible i heard of some people say cutting the blossom end off but we never do that and we never have a problem with them being soft supposedly i've heard that there's some kind of enzyme in this blossom end that causes them to get soft we've never done that never had a problem with them getting soft so that's just my experience what i do is on the blossom end where it's see how it's turned brown i just take my vegetable brush scrub it real good just scrub that blossom end off all right folks there's the last one you can see how you can see how nasty that water is and it's been drained out four or five times and it's still what little bit of cucumbers was left in there it's how nasty the water is so that's why i scrub them off right there when i'm filling my jars i try to use 
the bigger cucumbers first. Because what tends to happen is you will run out of small cucumbers to fill in with and you'll have big voids in the jar that you can't fill up because you don't have cucumbers that size. But if that happens anyway, you can always cut them up or slice them up to make them smaller to fill in some voids, you know. I just pack them in as tight as I can get them. Most of the time I pack them around the edge and then put one right in the center and that really kind of tightens them all up. Usually one for the shape you need if you've got quite a few. Quartz, same way. Bigger ones first and fill in with the smaller ones. And I like to keep them, I like to keep them down below the shoulder of the jar right here if I can. It works better when you start filling them up and whatnot. It's a lot easier to do that. All right, folks, the quarts get one quarter teaspoon of alum per quart. And the pints, one eighth teaspoon of alum per pint. And I'm using the same scoop because I do not have an eighth teaspoon scoop, so I'm using half of one quarter. One quarter scoop, half full. Quartz, one tablespoon of dill weed. I like to use my own dill, but when you forget to grow plants, you don't have it to use, so you just have to improvise and I guess the worst thing about using store-bought dill weed is just that you don't have the satisfaction. It still tastes really good, and I'm not really disappointed with the difference in the two, but just the satisfaction, growing your own. You like me, and this is pretty dilly at this rate. I like it that way, though, so. Pints get one teaspoon of dill weed. So, every jar gets clove of garlic. Now, I just went ahead and put the lids on these jars after I put all the spices I wanted in there. Put all the lids on. I've got the oven at 200 degrees. I'm just gonna put these jars in the oven at 200 degrees. Leave them about 10 minutes. When I do that, I'll turn on the mixture that I'm gonna pour in here. And after the 10 minutes, my mixture will be boiling and I'll show you. 200 degrees. My mixture, which is four cups of distilled white vinegar, three quarts of water. I use, uh, we got a good water filter. I use filtered water for my all my canning purposes. That is four cups of distilled white vinegar, three quarts of filtered water, and one cup of cannon and pickling salt. And I'm just gonna bring that to a boil and by then my jars will be warmed up pretty good in the oven and we'll get these pickles canned. So we've got our solution boiling. Our pickles and jars in the oven with all the ingredients. I've got the oven on 200. It's just these jars have been in there about 10 to 15 minutes and they're pretty hot. Not too hot to handle but they're hot enough. I like to keep my lids and jars and everything hot when I'm doing any kind of hot canning because it always works better. If lids are hot, sometimes I'll preheat lids in boiling water. Just depends on what it is that I'm canning. So I seal them up good, make sure the top of the jar is uh, clean. Put the lid on pretty tight set them back. 
important thing to can and I think a lot of people don't stress enough is hot jars, hot lids, everything works so much better. You don't want to pour hot boiling liquid into a cold jar anyway because it'll bust and you'll have a mess. And you want to work pretty fast because you want to get that lid on there and those jars are as hot as possible. Try to work as fast as we can. You don't want to reuse lids. I mean, I have plenty of times and you get lucky most of the time, but if you're going to reuse lids, it's best to do it on your pickles because if they come unsealed, pickles are something that you can just throw in the refrigerator and they'll keep. They'll keep a long time. You'll have time to use them up before they ruin. So that's why I always try to use old lids on pickles. Something else I wanted to add about pickles. If you use this method to can them, and for some reason they don't seal, you can just throw them in a water bath for five minutes or so. And I've had it before if I don't have my jars real hot and they don't seal, I just throw them in a water bath for about five minutes, put them back under the towels and they ever once sealed then. So if you have everything hot to start with, like this, you should not have a problem. This pickling solution left over, you can just put that in a jar and save it until you need it again. So that's why I love it. One of, one of the reasons I love this recipe. All right, folks, I didn't tell you yesterday, but anytime I pressure can or can anything hot, I put it under towels for the first 24 hours or the next day or whatever. But it's the way my mother always done it. She always had good luck canning. She almost never lost anything. And that's pretty much the way it is with me. I try to do just like she taught me and that's, it works, so. I was gonna uncover these pickles from yesterday and see what kind of a seal we got on this batch. All sealed, every single one of them. This is all old used leads from last year. I try to be real careful when I take them off and not damage them. And then I always use use lids on my pickles because like I was saying, if the seal breaks, you can always just throw them in the refrigerator and eat them soon. So you can use those old used lids because right now lids ain't the easiest thing to get anyway. So, and I have used, I have reused lids on a lot of different things, but it's a little bit of a risk. You just have to keep an eye on it. But what I'll do with these now, I will set them in a spot where I can watch them for a couple weeks in the can room before I put them in with the rest of the pickles, just to make sure that they're gonna maintain that seal, all of them. And if one comes unsealed, just throw it in the refrigerator. If you have, if you do this and the jars are not hot or whatever, and a lot of them don't seal, you can always just throw them in a water bath for about five minutes or so, and that should, that should seal them up if you have a lot of them that don't seal. Uh, but now these will go towards the can shelf with the other canned foods, and uh, I hope this video's helped you. If you've not subscribed to my channel yet, please do. Uh, doing a lot of neat stuff, I think. Thank you for watching. Like this video if you will. I look forward to seeing you next time.